Let's talk about setting up a vendor record. To add a new vendor, come here to the Maintain pull-down menu and come down to Vendors. In here, there's three fields we have to fill out at a minimum. They are the vendor ID, the name, and over here on the Purchase Defaults tab is the default purchase account. Once we have those three fields filled in, we can save this vendor record and work with it under the Tasks pull-down menu. But let's look at a detailed setup. Let's come in here to the magnifying glass and let's, let's open Aaron and Son Contractors. And let's look at their vendor record. You can see here we start out with a vendor ID. Now once again this vendor ID field is how Peachtree categorizes and lists and references our vendors. Let's go in and look at this. If we click on the magnifying glass we can see that all of our vendors are listed according to their vendor ID which is this column. We can sort this list based on the vendor name by clicking on this button. You see when we do that not very many things change because Bellwether Garden Supply, like most Peachtree users, use a vendor ID that resembles the vendor name. This is what we recommend. We do not recommend assigning a number series or something other than this type of a system. This makes it easy to look up your vendors. In this field, we put the vendor ID, and then here we put the name. Down here is their general tab. We can put contact information. If we have an account number with them, we would put that here, and their address. Up here is the vendor type field. We can use this field to categorize our vendors into different types, and then we can use this field for generating reports or processing vendor payments. 1099 type. If this vendor needs to receive a 1099 from us at the end of the year, we would set that up here. Most commonly, we will use independent contractor. Now, a detailed discussion of 1099 rules is far beyond the scope of this training video series. But to briefly describe the 1099 rules, you're required to issue a 1099 to a vendor who you paid cash to for services during the year, and that vendor is a non-corporation. In other words, not incorporated. Those three criteria. They provided services to you, you paid them in excess of $600, and they're not incorporated. If it's those three criteria, then you will need to issue them a 1099. The next fields, telephone, fax, email, and website. Let's look at the purchase defaults tab. Purchase defaults, here is their default purchase account. So when we buy things from them, Peachtree will default to the repairs expense account. We can change this on individual purchases from this vendor. And if we have a tax ID number from this vendor, we would enter it here. So if we are in, going to issue them a 1099, we would want their tax ID number here so that Peachtree can include it when we process the 1099 at the end of the year. If we had to have some standard ship via terms, we would want to put them here. And finally, our terms with this vendor. If their terms are different than our default terms that we set up, then we'd want to come in here, uncheck the use standard terms, and set up different terms for this vendor. Let's go ahead and use the standard terms for them and click OK. Over here is the Custom Fields tab. 
So we'd want to fill out the information on this tab so that we have good records on this vendor. And then this tab over here allows us to look at some recent history of the vendor. Vendor since, last invoice date, last invoice amount, and last payment date. This is a nice quick reference screen. We're going to show you two other good quick, quick reference screens throughout this training. Let's go back to the general tab. When we set up a vendor, sometimes we'll have a beginning balance with them. Let's go down and look at the beginning balance button. Click here, and if we had a beginning balance to set up with them, we would enter it here. Invoice number, date, if we had given a purchase order with them, we'd have that here. And the amount. Now, beginning balances are to be used only when you're first setting up your Peachtree software. These are balances that exist at your startup date. Beginning balances do not affect the general ledger. Let's close out of this screen. And here's the second of three good quick reference screens we're going to show you. Click on this button, and this shows beginning balance and current, any current activity. This screen does not have drill down feature on it. Let's close this window. And that's how you set up a vendor in your Peachtree software.